Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna get into this thing. It's our 62 Valiant Signet 200. We've got to fix the floors. There's some holes, there's some rust. The goal is to make it waterproof, weatherproof, so we can move on to getting the carpet in it and the seats back in it and get it back on the road. So join us as we continue the work on this little two-door hardtop. Let's get to it. So first things first, assess the damage and then figure out a plan. So I started with this corner because it's probably the worst. It's the worst to get to anyway. I scraped away as much of the undercoating as I needed. I found some rust under it. I mean, it's kind of amazing that there's still the factory paint under there, but where this undercoating, you know, the water gets behind it, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword where it keeps it rust-free, but once the water gets behind it, forget it. So this is a difficult area to get to. So I figured out a plan where I'm gonna cut on the inside and then I'm going to make a piece to brace this where the hinge is held. Now it's sturdy, it's not going anywhere, but I need to stop water from coming through here. And it's rusted on the side, which I'm not going to be able to get to. I found a bolt up above where the fender comes loose, but I'm not taking this fender off because once you get into these bolts, they're gonna break and then the bumper is actually bolted through the fender it's actually bolted through this bottom piece which is separate but then you get into you know do I separate this lower piece from the fender and then those bolts break and then the front well, there's then the balance in the front, which is three pieces. And then the front here where this headlight bucket is separate. And then there's this upper balance, which is separate. And once you start taking all this stuff apart, it just falls apart. And then you're, you know, you open a whole can of worms. Same thing happened with the dart, but that I knew was gonna happen. That was kind of the plan. I took the fenders off. You know, I had to redo the upper control arm mounts and frame this frame on this side. I sectioned and, I mean, but I planned on it. You know, I had to replace the cowl and the firewall and the windshield and I, I did a ton on that. But on this, I don't wanna get into that. This is just get it back on the road. And what I think I'll do is, you know, I want to keep, I want to get the interior where it's, you know, water can't get in. And then hopefully I can find some lower fender sections or make some lower, lower fender sections. And then I can deal with, when I do that, I can deal with this rocker, which is just, it's rusted on the end on the bottom. And this frame rail, it's solid right here. The end of it, it's just got a hole right there. So on the inside, so I like to do is put a light on on the opposite side and I can see all the rust holes. So there's a hole here, but it's just where the seam sealer was. There's a couple of holes of light here. This is a rust hole. So those I can fill up with the seam sealer because that's how it was from the factory. When it comes to this, what I'll probably do is cut here and then this inner brace, there's spot welds here. So I'll cut to the spot welds, cut down, and then I'll make a piece that It'll go over these spot welds and come to the firewall. It'll be a 90. And then, like I said before, I'll put a P 
piece that runs down this brace to the bottom to the rocker I'll do that from the outside I probably won't get too many spot welds on the bottom because it's kind of you know the rockers rusty but I can deal with that when I deal with the fender but at least that way water won't come through here and this will be blocked off and that'll be good and then I'll move on to these other holes or other rust areas and just you know assess the damage cut out the rust make a panel from the piece I cut out and move on now, other than that this side isn't that bad there's that spot which is above the frame that's not a problem there's a tiny spot here and there's a little spot here which I kind of ground to see what was going on with it so that's the plan fix this side move on to the driver's side I just want to say so this is the top of the frame rail this is usually where the floor is rock because water gets trapped so that's a spot weld this is a spot weld I'll just grind this off it's still got some of the floor on it there's a little bit of one here there's one up here this I've never seen this is after I chipped away at it for I don't know how long look at this pool of weld and then it drags down here I actually chipped this piece off I have never seen that I mean it, these Mopars and other cars I'm sure spot welded together but it's usually a spot a spot a spot I don't think a machine could do that I'm not sh I've never seen that before all right big chunk of car missing but I do have a plan so I'm working on cutting out the rust and getting ready for welding here's a pro tip check for gas leaks before you start welding so I had remembered a gas leak and then I wanted to fix the line. I think there was a union someone put in here, but I just noticed it's leaking from up here, it's up in here, but it has dripped all the way. It's all along here. So that is a nice line of gas going right to a hole in the floor that needs to be welded up. I do have the new gas line hanging up over there. So I think I'm gonna change the gas line and then do the welding. Pro tip. The more you know. The less I know, apparently. These spot welds are just gigantic. I have never seen that. I had to grind them down here so I can get a piece of metal on here. This sheet metal these cars are made of is probably like, I think it's like 18 gauge, maybe 20. Um, and it's much thinner, you know, now. But I tried to get all the undercoating off on the bottom. This is just so pitted. You know, I'd have to go all the way to the tunnel or replace the whole floor pan, but they don't make floor pans, so I'm gonna make tiny little patches there's one hole I'll try to weld up. It's just so thin. At least these are on the frame rail. And I have a starting point. This is on the top of a frame rail, but it's just so thin. I might not butt weld these. I might try to get a piece under it. Or over it even. It doesn't really matter at this point. I just want it waterproof. So the kick panel, door hinge support area. I just cut out what was rusted. I'm gonna put a piece of metal coming down that'll go to the edge of what used to be the firewall edge. And then I'll weld a piece here so I have something strong enough that's not pitted and covered in crud. And then what I'll do is I'll weld a piece. There's a brace here that kinda makes it to the bottom but not so much. So I'll put another piece here that runs down to the rocker at this side and I'll probably weld it on before I put this piece in. We'll see how it goes. So that way I'm holding up this rusted area. It's down on the rocker and it's holding everything together. The door doesn't really move around. It's not, you know, sagging or anything. And I want to keep the water from coming into this space. So I need to put a piece here as well. 
So that's that. This back corner area, same as on the other side, there's actually a piece of sheet metal on the bottom here. So it's like doubled up. But what they did was, so there was a plastic plug here, just like the floor plugs, but this doesn't go through to the interior floor. So there was all this crud built up in here. There's all these little tiny things. I don't even know what they are. They kind of have a shape of like a seed. They're like a snail shell kind of shape, but it's loaded with them. They are all over the place. And they're still in there. Anybody? Should I plant them? And I don't even know how stuff gets in here. I don't think it come I don't think it goes into the frame rail. So as this stuff builds up, it just rusts where the spot weld is. So now I gotta fix it. I won't be fixing the bottom piece here. I'm just gonna fix the top. So I'll just put a patch in here because this floor pan is separate from that. Oh, enjoy, there's more. I also tried to empty the frame rails. Of course, the holes in the bottom of the frame rails aren't at the lowest point, but that's a lot of crud to get out of that frame rail. Frame rail's not you know, rotted. I hit it with a like a pick. But that's what came out of it, at least what I could get out of it. You run a hose in there and those big chunks of rust, they don't just float out of there. The other thing I want to point out is right where this frame rail meets the firewall, right where this flashlight's pointing. So the inner fender comes down, the frame rail continues, and the firewall comes down to meet the frame rail. There were styrofoam blocks and these are them. And it looks like they were put on before the undercoating. So I don't know if that's like a factory thing or they just do it before they put on undercoating. But it was just holding a bunch of crud in that area. So I pulled them out. I've never seen that before. This is how I make a template. Take some tape. In this case, I have packing tape. Typically I use like painter's tape or something else, but it's tape. That's what I had. Then I just tape it on, make some marks, and I'll either tape it on a cardboard or tape it right on a, a piece of metal and cut it out. And I'll do the same for these. You know, the clear tape's nice, I just realized, for this, because you can see it, and then just trace it. But, you know, just painter's tape, you just rub your finger and it'll give you the pattern and you just cut it out. So the metal I'm using, I only had this one sheet. It's like 18 gauge, I think. But I do have what's left of the 62 dart. So this is the rear floor pan section. It's the only section that was good in the floor. And those two pieces are from the trunk. It's really all I salvaged because nothing else was good. So I'll be using the 62 to fix the 62. It's cheaper than buying it. I had to turn the camera back on. This is the first cut. I mean, that is near perfect. I'm gonna have another piece coming down against this. So that'll go under that. That was actually the plan. Look at that, even where I put that, where I was gonna make a circle hole. Sometimes things just work out. Most times it's a struggle. So here we are next day, at least the next day that I'm out here. And I cut up all my patches for the passenger side. So this piece will go in here. This goes here. And this piece is a thicker material. I think it's like a, I don't know, 18 gauge maybe. And that'll go in there. And the, the door doesn't sag or move or anything, but I figured the stronger gauge metal here can't hurt. This is just to keep the water from coming in. This piece is remnants from the dart. It was part of the trunk floor, I believe. It 
had these ribs in it, which kind of matches this. So my idea is to just slightly hook that under there. And then I'll hit it with a hammer, use some self-tappers to hold it down, and weld this in. My experience with these Mopars, at least, is I believe this is 18 gauge, but when it gets all pitted, it just, the you can just blow right through it with the welder. I would prefer to, to butt weld it, but in my experience, this pitted metal just does not weld very well. So I'm going to overlap it, weld it to the frame. Here's frame, here's frame. Oh, this is the frame. You know, seam seal it, paint it. I've cut smaller patches. Both of these are on top of frame. And they're just a tiny bit bigger than the floor. So hopefully I don't burn through it. I'm going to try to weld this hole up all by itself because it is up against the frame. In the rear, these are just holes. Like I said this before, there's another piece of metal that's the floor under this and it starts here and it goes up under and there's a drain plug down there which I don't know why they plug it off so here's the remnants of that piece that goes up and under so the water just stood stayed in here and rusted it out so I made these pieces just a little bigger so I have some material to weld to this one is right on the frame, or not on the frame, it's right on the spot weld. So I just drilled a hole in there, and I'll just tack all the way around them. This one turned out all right. I mean, I'll grind it and then go back and make sure there's no pinholes. I was able to fill that rust hole. That's acceptable for under the floor. That was that hole, I was able to close it up even though it was thin metal, it's right near the frame. A little grinding, that's acceptable. I mean, look at this. That's the factory spot weld, so worse than mine. That's not acceptable. I'll just be chasing my tail. I mean, it's pretty thick metal here, and the frame rail's right here. And I even drilled into the frame to clean it up. I drilled a hole in this piece, and it just destroyed it. I mean, even just little taps, and then I got frustrated and put a big glob here trying to build a bridge, and... It's just not worth it. I'll just cut it out. I think I'll call it quits for the night. Just hang out and make sure nothing is smoldering. But I got all these patches done, at least as far as cut. Gotta redo one. And then on to the driver's side. It is the next day. I'm going to continue with the welding. It's a nice day, so I pushed it outside. And I can, you know, get this seat out and get some more patches done for the other side. But I'm going to finish these up. I shined a light up last night through this one. And I could see a little, couple little pinholes, which I marked. I'll weld those up. I'll grind it. I'll weld this one in. I'll grind this down. That I'm going to leave. I'll use some self-tappers to screw these panels in and get them welded in and we'll come back and see how I did. That looks familiar. That's the windshield from our 58 Coronet. So we're in the midst of changing out the windshield on that. Can't, uh, can't work on enough projects at once for some reason. Got one, two, three, four patch panels in, welded in. This one, I don't think I'm going to weld it in. And for multiple reasons, mostly because I don't feel like it, but this floor is pretty pitted. It's solid, but it's pitted. And trying to get a smooth, clean surface to even weld through like a spot weld is difficult. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll unscrew it, seam seal it, primer it, seam seal it on the back, screw it down, and then I'll do that. Eastwood rust coating. I got the kick panel in. It's really just tack welded all the way around and then there's a piece that you can't see that's behind this that acts like a like a mud flap kind of to keep debris out of here. 
I'm just going to seam seal this on both sides. The firewall at the floor needs some more seam sealer. It's kind of deteriorated, so this will all get seam sealed both sides and painted. I also want to say, typically like when I make patch panels, I use tape. I used to use painter's tape and then just, you know, you go around with your finger and then you get the shape. But this worked out really well with this patch. And I cut it bigger, but it told me where all the, like the frame rail was, you know, all this stuff. When I did this one, it was just a perfect trace it, cut it, weld it. Same with these two. So now on this side, I need one patch there, one, two, three, four, five. And then this is where the seatbelt support goes. This is where the other one goes. And there's a plate on the back that's spot welded. And I took this one out. This one just, the floor was rotted. So I think what I'm going to do with this is make a larger piece and spot weld it in all the way around and then put the seatbelt bracket behind it. And I'll probably do the same over here. They actually have one here, one here too. Okay, so that's a lot of patches to make. So I will be doing that. And then once those are done, I'll tackle this. The thing that bothers me about this is the way this is shaped. There's like a bump out here, and then the floor comes up, but it comes up faster where the gas pedal is. So the gas pedal's mounted at an angle, and it's completely rotted out. It's just barely hanging on. So I tried to find a patch panel, the 63 and up, the floors are close, but I know that's different. So I'll probably do the same as I did on the passenger side and just, you know, cut out what's terrible and see if I can just screw something down. I would like to like restore this car, do everything correctly and, you know, pull everything out and you know, drill out spot welds, but I, I don't think it needs it, and I, this isn't the car for that. This car is going to get driven. They all get driven, but, you know, the only thing I have to prevent is, you know, if you're in the rain, I don't want water coming in. I don't want water coming up through the floor or anywhere else. So that's the goal with this. Just keep the water out. And the trunk... And the rest of it is rock solid. There is no rust in the back there. I got the carpet already, put the seats back in it, and it's gonna be driven. It's pretty much ready to be driven. It just needs this floor fixed. I mean, brakes are done. The only thing I'd have to do is put a muffler on it. I have the tailpipe, I just have to put it on. On to more patch panels. I've got these patches all cleaned up, all the metal cleaned up around them. I think there's like seven total. Once again, just making this watertight. I'll rust paint underneath. This is where the seat goes, so I don't mind doubling this up and making it a little stronger. I'll probably, when I screw these down, I'll probably leave the screws in to be determined. So I'm going to burn these in. Then I gotta do the two seat bolt mounts on this side. The other side is done. And then I'll attack this mess. So I burn these in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it went fairly smoothly. Like I said before, just making it watertight. This one. I actually tack welded it up top and then just beat it with a hammer and just tack welded it as I went until it was the shape that I needed. That was another one where I put clear tape in here, drew it out, and then when I flattened the tape it was the right length even though it was curved, but I still had to bash it. And I found another rust hole, so I'll have to make a tiny patch because it's just too thin, it wasn't letting me weld it up. Yeah, 
And it doesn't help that it rained. Looks good though. Okay, until tomorrow. So I was originally gonna lay out some tape and mark out, you know, where these holes are, trim this up nice first. Now I'm thinking, I think I'll build the floor on top of this before I, you know, cut anything out or grind stuff down. I just want to get the actual way the floor is, especially around this gas pedal. It seems to be okay here, but it's, it's rotted above it, which makes it flex. So I'm going to see if I can get this off. And it's in better shape than I thought. I've been, you know, hitting it with the hammer and, or the screwdriver and, you know, there's a couple of holes. There's one here and here and here and here. There's one over here. I think there's a tiny one there. But it's not all the way through it. I know there's a frame rail here. I think I want to completely cut this out and, and lose, you know, the whole shape here. It looks quite odd. This is higher than this, and there's this bump out, and it's kind of odd shape behind the pedal. I'm gonna see if I can get this pedal out without destroying this floor, so I can make a pattern. All right, let's get to it. Cotter pin fought me quite a bit. Not a lot of room there. The floor kind of broke. At least I know this angle now. There's this weird bump here, this angle, and then this up here too. It's really not important. It's just this angle that I wanted to keep. Got the little plastic bushing on it. And I don't think I've ever seen this. There's like a spring. This hooks around the pedal rod, this side. And this goes around the rod that goes through the pedal. Maybe that proves this car is quite original, but then again, someone tied a string here, which I don't know why. This pedal's got the typical Hinge here is just rotted. I don't think that's gonna work. It just busts out of the the rubber here. You can see the hinges. This is probably molded into this. I'll chisel it with like a screwdriver first, but we'll see if we can free it up. I'm also noticing this bracket's got kind of a curve to it. So that means this curve here comes down. And I don't see it at the base here. It's also a strange pedal mechanism where it pulls down. If I had three hands I could do this. Let's see here. the pedal it's pulling down see on the wagon I drove it for a while without the pedal because the, the rod just swung this way but I absolutely need the pedal not only do I absolutely need it I absolutely need it in the right spot because if it's you know off it's kind of pulled straight down whatever wherever that is that's weird I know the pedal goes backwards. It must go backwards and down. That's nice and complicated. Alright, I gotta think of how I'm gonna make sure this pedal does what it's supposed to do and is mounted in this weird way. Maybe this bracket's just bent from being used and abused. I don't think this hinge was even moving. When I was giving it gas and driving it around the yard, it was just bending the floor. That's why it kind of just fell off when I undid the top. 
more good news. So depending on how long that was there, that would prevent the pedal from turning on this hinge, which it still doesn't turn on. Check this out. There was a rock, a literal rock, embedded in the rust. There's still a piece of the rock there. I'm hoping this I can free this hinge up and it doesn't fall apart on me. So this is how this section is shaped. There's this bump here, which has nothing to do with the gas pedal. And then it kind of comes straight up, but then there's this curve and it's bend over. And then there's also it bends over here, but then it kind of fades away up here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this shape somehow. I'm not a metal worker by any means. And then I'm going to put like a straight piece behind all this going straight up. So the, the two bolts that hold the gas pedal on have something to attach through. And I'm just going to lay this top piece right on top of this. I'm not cutting this out because I don't want to lose this shape. It shouldn't be raised up too much where it's going to affect, you know, the actual gas pedal the geometry. I found this piece. I'm thinking it might work. It's got this curve on the edge. We'll see what happens. Not looking half bad. The floor, that hump is here. That ridge, it's right on it. That's the base. It's got this weird slope here. It's in all the way. It's kind of it was up at an angle too. There's just so much going on here in this one area. It's just nuts. Not bad for just, I mean, I'm just cutting it to bend it. You know, I'm not like forming it, but, and this lip helps make it look better, but it's actually tight against it. And that's up against that all the way. So it's a good starting point. Not bad for a, an old piece of trunk floor. So this follows this curve nice. So obviously I have to get this sorted, but I wasn't sure where to bend these, like where to cut it and bend it over this piece. But I'm not too concerned about that. I went under the car and took the marker and drew out where the hole is on this piece. So. I can match it up to this, so I know exactly where to drill the two holes. And then I'll drill the two holes, and then I'll put a piece, another piece of metal under the car going up. And then I'll know exactly where to drill that once I put this back on. I don't know how many hours this is just for a gas pedal, but after seeing how it works, where it's like a... It's a weird pivot in here and also on the outside of the car. So the pivot continues outside where it pivots on the carburetor. It's also pivoting down at the transmission. That's a lot of stuff going on with this linkage. Keeping the pedal where it was was the main goal. So hopefully Everything works as it should. I think it was hesitating when I was driving it around the yard because it was pivoting on this bottom piece of rust. This was all rotted out, so the whole pedal was moving. Either that or the carburetor's messed up, but I did rebuild it. So probably it's messed up because I rebuilt it, but anyhow, I'm gonna make the bottom piece like I said, and then figure out how to do this. This curvature I mentioned earlier is actually just the the bracket that these threaded bolts screw into. The rotted floor is in between. It's just so hard to tell. And this bolt is still rotted to this hinge. So I did, this is flat. So we're good there. I don't have to reuse this, you know, threaded bracket. I can use a nut and bolt, but I still need to get this out of here without destroying this thing. 
I imagine this piece of the gas pedal is paper thin. You might even have some carpet in between there. So this is where we're at. Passenger side's done. Driver's side, I cut the rot out in these sections. I know there's a couple pinholes, I'll address that. I got my pedal piece that's kind of weird shape, but it's making the shape over again. And I'm gonna put that over top. I got this big panel that's going here. And it butts up against the gas pedal piece. So I'm gonna screw these down. I'm not welding them down. And there's a couple reasons for that. Among them, it's really thin when, when it's pitted, as I said before. And I would really like to get like a rust-free floor here at some point. So I don't wanna make a huge mess of this and just cut a giant hole and try to recreate all these little bends and everything. And so, you know, and whether or not I do it or someone else, you know, time will tell. So this little piece goes here and this is where the e-brake cable goes through. And then this piece goes here. And this one especially, I didn't want to weld in because when I take the fender off, or if I ever take the front fenders off and really get into this, uh, there's a couple pieces coming together on the other side of this. And there's actually a seam here where two things come together, this frame rail and this firewall or floor piece. And then the firewall's up here and there's the side. And so what I'm gonna do is grind all this down and then I'm gonna use that Eastwood rust converter paint, paint the floor, paint all these pieces front and back, let them dry and then screw them down. And what I'll end up with is, so these pinholes are gonna be covered, but there's actually a frame rail here that runs across. It's the torsion bar cross member. So it's not like water's gonna be spraying from the bottom up into this section. It's actually the, the water that was, you know, from people's feet that was rusting this out. So once I get that all squared away, I'll seam seal these panels, screw them down. I may weld this one up a little or weld it to the other bigger piece to be determined. For the seatbelt mounts, passenger side is good. The threads are good. Driver side, this was rotted completely. I couldn't get the the bolts out of the original pieces so I drilled this one out and that one's a mess so I took more of the trunk floor from my dart and where it was grooved the same as this I just cut a piece out and it fits perfect and what I'll do is I'll mount it from the bottom so and I'll drill holes in the floor and I'll, I'll spot weld it and then drill the hole again for the screw because I'll get new seat belts and they come with like bolts and washers. So there's this plate behind the floor that if you know if there's something happens and there's you know collision or accident of some kind, you're not pulling this plate off of the floor, it's behind it. And I did the same with this one. So there's the two grooves here and I'll just spot weld to the floor from the back and it's pretty close to the curve so I left some meat here so I'll drill holes in the floor weld this from the bottom the only thing I really have to do is make sure there's no undercoating on the bottom which I'm sure there is so I'm gonna weld these in and then grind down all the little welds these aren't terrible probably would never feel them but I'll just Hit them with the grinder a bit. I'll grind all this rust down. I have to fix this pinhole and that pinhole in the tunnel. And then once that's done, I'm gonna paint the whole thing with that rust conversion paint. I'll paint from the rear seat pan, 
right about here all the way up to the firewall and also the trunk all right we'll come back when these are welded in i got some undercoating scraping to do which is never fun so this is it it's finally time to rust encapsulate slash paint the floor i got my eastwood rust encapsulator plus these are the seat brackets that bolt to the seat and bolt to the floors these are my patch panels back here in the trunk I'm just gonna paint what's rusted and I'll leave as much blue paint as possible uh, maybe the, maybe I should just paint the whole thing I think what I'll do is paint from here to the end and leave this top piece I want to be able to see what the original color was so I'm going to try to find a spray paint for the trunk so I'm not going to do this back panel so we're going to do the trunk we're going to come over here and we're going to do from the firewall all the way to the rear seat pan i'll probably stop like here and just paint the whole thing so this stuff takes i don't know i think it's like an hour or four hours to dry and then you can paint it with regular paint and you have up to 48 hours to actually paint over it and then you'd have to scuff it after that i won't be painting it it's going to be under the carpet Apparently, if you if it's going to be in the sun, you're supposed to paint it. You know, at the most, these seat brackets will be in the sun, I guess. But I can just shoot them with a little bit of black spray paint. All right, I'm not going to film it. It's pretty nasty stuff. I got my respirator because it'll give you a crushing headache. At least it gives me one. So the next time I turn on this camera, this will be painted. And if I do say so myself, this car is starting to look really good. Even though it hasn't really changed as far as how it looks. More of a feeling, I guess. Alright, let's get to it. I'm literally down to the last drop. I didn't even think that would do the whole floor, let alone the trunk. It was less than a quarter full, I'm pretty sure. There it is. Looking good. Smells terrible, but that'll go away. It's a pretty solid car. For where it's from. So I'll let that dry a couple days. And then we'll get the carpet in. And the seats. Here's the trunk. I didn't paint every little thing. Like right there I left. It's fine. And like I said, underneath or in between the trunk and the cabin. And I'm gonna try to find a paint that matches this blue because Mopar trunks are body color. But it was very pitted down in here. That was a must. Every time I put that spare in, it would just soak up the rust color into the tire got kind of an echo going on there and i got all my parts and pieces done i'll probably take these seat brackets and hit them with some spray paint you can do it after four hours or before 48 hours so i'll just wait till tomorrow and just hit them with some black spray paint these patch pieces will just they're fine i'm just going to screw them down that's the e-brake piece because it actually goes through the floor like through the floor where your feet are like flat on the floor I don't know if you can see that but right there the next time we see this car we will be putting the carpet and the seats and the interior as much as possible but the goal will be to get it on the road 
So if it's just the carpet and the two front seats, that's the way it's going to be. I got some stuff to do with the engine. I got a water pump for it and I got to sort out the headlights and things like that. Make sure all the electrical works. Next video. Interior. Make it roadworthy. It's very close. And drive it. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. The kid actually wanted to do some welding, but when I decided to go with just screwing down patch panels, because I would like to in the future possibly just cut these two front pans out completely, um, I ran out of things to weld, but we've got plenty of other projects. Pretty crazy when your teenage daughter asks you to teach her how to weld, so. I will run with that one. Come on! Oh, she just burped. Come on. 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 Come on, baby. <laughs>